our next topic um, is that we're going to talk about stress, and I think that this is a really important thing to keep in mind, especially with what's happening in the world today. I always like to tell my patients this. Um, stress is inevitable. So it doesn't matter who you are, where you're living, if there's a global pandemic going on, there's always going to be something that can set off your stress response system. The really important thing to remember is that the negative effects of stress are not inevitable. So that's really good news because it's very possible to get triggered right now in a stress response really, really easily, right? You can leave your home and people are walking far away from one another. Or you go to the grocery store and there's this like level of unease in the world all over the place right now. This is inevitable. There's always going to be something that can set off your system. What you can do is you can alter your physiological response to stress, which is the most important thing that you can do to prevent the um, negative hormonal influences that that stress can have on your body. So this is a great time to be taking up meditation or using a mindfulness exercise on a regular basis. Take some gentle walks or do some gentle exercise, yoga, deep breathing exercises, acupuncture. You're not going to be able to come in and have regular acupuncture right now, but our TCM docs are still doing online consults and can help you use acupressure at home on yourself, or you can have a partner do it um, for you as well. That can help to stimulate this relaxation side of the nervous system. CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. There are lots of therapists who are also doing telehealth sessions now that you can connect with. Um, and just generally, time spent in nature has been shown to help to reduce cortisol levels as well. What we don't want you to turn to is smoking, drinking, recreational drugs, the things that we know are not really fantastic for egg and sperm quality, um, and to try to not sweat the small stuff, uh, because that can become, you know, we can make a mountain out of a mohill fairly easily. So this is not just for your fertility. You really do have a right to be happy and to feel good and to have energy. Um, so if you do feel overwhelmed by stress, um, know that there are resources out there, and please reach out to us if you need any more support um, during this time because we're still here for you. Um, it's just virtually, which is a little bit different, um, but we're still happy to help in whatever way we can. Um, exercise is an important topic when we talk about fertility um, and basically sort of falls into this category where we say too much is too much and too little is too little. Um, there was a 2019, so fairly recent, review paper that showed that pregnancy rates as, were as much as twice as high in patients who maintained a regular, moderate intensity exercise routine compared to no exercise while trying to conceive. So the things we know about exercise is that it's better to do some than to do none, but it's not necessarily better to do way too much. So really intense exercise training for triathlons for some people would be too intense, Ironman competitions, um, really uh, you know high temperature yoga, things that are really intense on the body do not necessarily bode well for fertility. But this review paper sort of reinforcing that a regular, the key here being moderate intensity exercise routine is really beneficial for fertility for most women. Um, so this is sort of just a note about it not being too intense. A 2006 study showed that over four hours a week of cardiovascular exercise, women in this group had a 40% lower live birth rate. So not too much, but we want to keep it moderate. What does that look like? That's a really good question. Um, my general recommendation for women who are trying to conceive is to try and hit 150 minutes a week. So that's, you know, 30 minutes, five times a week of moderate intensity, cardiovascular exercise, whatever you love to do, whether that's hiking, um, jogging, uh, cycling, whatever you love, 150 minutes a week of that, two or three strength training sessions a week, and we would increase that or decrease that depending on what your body's capable of and what's going on in your hormonal system. And then everyone I always encourage incorporating some sort of flexibility work, whether that's a yoga class, a bar class, a Pilates, whatever you love to do. Fortunately, there are some really great um, online resources right now. 
um, most gyms and clubs are closed. Um, but I wanted to just uh, name off a few here, a few options for you still being able to get some of that sort of classwork that I know a lot of us uh, rely on for our regular exercise. So if you are an Orange Theory member, um, there's free at-home classes every day that sort of combine strength and cardio. Um, you can do a 90-day free, uh, 90 free trial through Peloton, and they have yoga, cycling, running, strength training classes, and they'll send you a bike for free for 90 days. Um, there's an app called Tone It Up that a lot of my patients use. Um, you can get a seven-day free trial on that, and they are very quick and easy strength and cardio circuit classes in yoga. Why um, Yoga at Home, uh, we've been loving here. So it's uh, there's a free two-week trial to do Why Yoga at Home. Um, those are on-demand Why Yoga classes, so including bar, um, meditation, Pilates, yoga, whatever you love at Why Yoga. And then, of course, walking, running, cycling, dancing, just get your body moving, 150 minutes a week, moderate intensity. One last thing I do want to say here, moderate intensity exercise uh, means that you're achieving a heart rate of 55 to 65 percent of your max heart rate. The way that you calculate that is really quite easy. Take 220 minus your age, that's your maximum heart rate. If you times that by 0.55 or 0.65, that will give you that range of where you want your heart rate to be for moderate intensity work. It's good to check it a couple of times. Certainly, if you have a smartwatch, you don't even have to think about checking it. You can just look down. Um, but it's good to check your pulse um, a few times during uh, an exercise bout just to sort of see if you're hovering around that 55 to 65% mark. This is another great um, thing to focus on right now uh, since we're all at home and probably cleaning our cupboards to try and uh, gain some sense of control over what's going on in our environments. Um, one huge thing you can focus on is reducing your toxin exposure in your immediate environment. So there was a really great um, systematic review done in 2019 that showed that a lot of non-persistent chemicals can affect fertility. So for men, they showed specifically high levels of benzophenones, which you can find in sunscreens, hairspray, shampoos, a lot of personal care products negatively impact fertility. Um, women, um, in particular, exposure to parabens and glycol ethers were correlated with a prolonged time to conception. Parabens are used as preservatives in a lot of cosmetics, a lot of pharmaceuticals, and actually in a number of foods as well. That's one of the preservatives, the reasons that we tell you to not eat processed food. And glycol ethers are found in a lot of things. They're found in a lot of liquid soaps, fragrances, cosmetics, and cleaning products. So these toxins in our cellular environment have a detrimental influence on egg quality and sperm quality. And by sort of systematically going through the different areas of your home, working through your old stuff, replacing it with healthier stuff, you can actually really significantly reduce your exposure to a lot of these toxins that can disrupt hormonal um, balance in your system and can affect egg and sperm quality. So at home, you want to be thinking about your cleaning supplies, your cosmetics, your laundry detergent, um, anything that you buy that you bring into your home. Um, there's some solutions here like using vinegar and baking soda for cleaning, um, green cosmetics. I love Ilia, Kosas, and RMS brands. Um, anything green at Sephora is a good choice. Doing an unscented natural laundry detergent, getting rid of um, dryer sheets and sw swapping them out for wool dryer balls, another really great solution. In the kitchen, again, thinking about the Dirty Dozen Clean 15, more organic produce, nothing processed. Store all of your food in glass or stainless steel and ideally not plastic. We're going to talk about BPA in a second. There's a huge reason why to not store food in plastic. In your home, you might consider it a home purifier. You may consider um, filtering your tap water. We have fairly good quality water in Vancouver, um, but you can take that extra strip and go for an RO filter, or we love a countertop Berkey um, here at home. We can take that everywhere with us, and it sort of pulls everything out of your water. BPA um, in plastic, I'm sure many of us have heard about BPA, but there are um, higher levels of BPA from plastics have actually been correlated with poor egg quality after retrieval from IVF. Um, so what they have seen in research is that as blood levels of BPA in women 
double, the percentage of eggs that fertilize normally declines by 50%, according to a research study. Um, and when you think about where BPA comes from, this kind of makes sense. BPA was originally being looked at um, when they were doing research for synthetic estrogens. So they were originally uh, thinking about using BPA as a synthetic estrogen in pharmaceuticals. Its sister molecule is called diethylsilvestrol, or DES. This was used, again, as a synthetic estrogen, but it was unfortunately given to pregnant women from the 40s to the 70s. You might know the outcome of this, because um, most people do know about these studies with DES, and actually caused a lot of reproductive um, birth defects in female babies when women during pregnancy were given DES. They thought it would be, that it would reduce um, first trimester nausea, and unfortunately, it actually caused a lot of hormonal effects. That makes sense, right? DES was a synthetic estrogen. It can disrupt the hormonal system. Unfortunately, BPA also has hormonal disrupting properties. It is also acts like a synthetic estrogen in the system. But it was found to have this interesting use in plastics where it makes plastics clear and hard and has been used in the plastics industry for a really long period of time. Um, it's been linked with PCOS, BPA exposure has been linked with recurrent miscarriages, and it's also been shown to, FS, uh, to affect FSH levels in men. Um, so for all of these reasons, like we need to stop storing our food in plastic, buying water in plastic, no bottled water, don't heat up any um, plastic um, Tupperware in the microwave. That is the number one chemical you've got to get rid of um, in your home. Uh, in order to enhance your fertility for both men and for women. So this is a really great project. You know, if you're working from home or you're not working, um, go through the different areas of your home and see how you can reduce exposures. Acupuncture, acupressure. This is one of our main modalities when our clinic is open to improve uterine blood flow, help to regulate your menstrual cycle and balance your hormones. We use acupuncture to improve sperm parameters reduce the negative effects of stress, and acupuncture has also been shown to increase live birth rates when it's done regularly leading up to IVF cycles, for example. Right now, you can't come to our clinic and have an acupuncture session. We are for your protection and for the safety of our staff. We've closed our doors at, Acub at Acubalance for um, the time being. But you still can use acupressure at home. So a lot of our TCM doctors are offering online consults um, they can do herbal prescriptions through telemedicine, and they can also help you do an acupressure se session for yourself at home. So again, whether that's for stress um, hormone-related concerns, or to help regulate your menstrual cycle, or to prepare your body for labor, for labor induction, for example, um, there's lots of great ways that we can utilize acupressure right now in place of acupuncture to continue your care and keep your body moving in the right direction. There's lots of reasons to seek out that care right now. One last tip for something that you can be doing at home to help to enhance your fertility is um, femoral massage. Um, so femoral massage, it's really not a massage per se, um, but what it basically is is it's a... Um, a therapy that we you can do at home, that you can do to yourself at home, that helps to increase blood flow to the pelvic organs. So basically what you do is you um, impede the flow, uh, flow of blood through the femoral artery, which sort of forces blood to be rerouted um, into the pelvic organs. So you get this sort of flush of fresh blood flow to the uterus, to the ovaries, and it's good for men as well. It can improve the flow of blood, nutrients, and oxygen to the testes as well. Um, for women, it, it would be a smart idea to perform a femoral massage on yourself from the end of menses, until ovulation. So you only do this during your follicular phase, the first half of your cycle. You don't want to perform it during your menses. You don't want to perform this if you're pregnant, um, and you wouldn't want to do it in the latter half of your cycle after you've ovulated. But in that first half of the cycle, two or three times each leg, once or twice a day, can really enhance that pelvic blood flow. 
Uh, for men, we don't have to worry so much about a cycle. You can do this daily. Um, you would do two or three sessions on each leg, and again, once or twice a day. The way that you do this is actually fairly straightforward. You would locate the femoral artery. You can take a look at this diagram here. Um, you would locate it sort of level with your pubic bone, just beneath the crease in your groin between your thigh and your lower abdomen. So you would basically find your pubic bone, go just below that sort of into the crease um, in your groin, and you would compress the femoral artery fairly heavily on one side at a time. You only do this on one side at a time. Fairly heavy pressure. When you feel that the flow has slowed down, of blood flow coming up the femoral artery, you want to hold for 30 seconds. What's going to happen then is the blood's going to start to back up and increase the pressure gradient in the iliac arteries, which forces more blood flow into the pelvic arteries. So this is basically going to flood the pelvic organs and the genitals with more blood. Once you release your hand after 30 seconds, you'll probably feel a sensation of warmth rushing down your leg because the blood supply is going to basically return to the lower extremities. So that'd be 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other side, and again, two or three times on each leg, once or twice a day for men and women. The only contraindications to this, so just make sure that you heed this warning here in the, in the bottom left um, of this image, there are a few reasons why you would not want to perform femoral massage, and certainly if you have any other concerns about your health and doing this um, on yourself, you should ask your physician, so one of us at AccuBalance or your personal physician. Um, uh, pregnancy, high blood pressure, heart disease or circulatory problems, history of stroke or detached retina. So if there's a circulatory disorder, we want to be very careful. We wouldn't necessarily recommend this for you. Um, but without any of these contraindications, femoral massage is generally a safe thing for most people to um, perform on themselves to help to um, enhance pelvic blood flow. So I hope that that was useful for you today. Um, I really just wanted to put out a little beacon um, for all of my fertility patients or all of you out there who, you know, are feeling lost during this time and like you want to create a little bit of a plan for moving forward and, and use this time to your advantage. Use this as your preconception planning time. Clean up your diet. Go through the chemicals in your home. Make sure you're exercising regularly, working on those stress reduction techniques. And please feel free to reach out. If you feel like you need more one-on-one -on -one coaching, we are all still here for you. We're just here for you virtually. It's a little bit different, um, but we can still offer most of the tools that we usually do in real life um, to help you nourish the soil before you plant the seed using the Healthy Baby Approach from AccuBalance. Thanks so much.